Among Formula One's most famous names, there is one that has become ingrained in popular culture like no other. Sterling Moss remains shorthand for speed, heroism, sportsmanship, and adventure. He was the quintessential gentleman racer. But his unmatched talents on the racetrack demanded another name too. And to his adoring fans, Sterling Moss was simply Mr. Motor Racing. Born to racing enthusiasts Aileen and Alfred in 1929, Speed was in his and his sister Pat's genes. Sterling was an all-round athlete, regularly boxing, playing rugby and horse riding. But by the age of 16, he was hungry for horsepower of a different kind and in a hurry to buy his first racing car. In 1947, Sterling won his very first event at a trials tournament. And in 1948, one day after turning 19, Sterling claimed a significant success at Goodwood in his Cooper 500. The natural-born racer had arrived. Moss debuted in Formula One in 1951, but it wasn't until 1955 that he completed a full season, as teammate to Juan Manuel Fangio in an all-conquering Mercedes squad. The pair became known as The Train, pushing each other on nose to tail in a silver wake. An immense 90-lap battle between the two at Aintree was won just by Moss. At last, he'd taken his first Formula One win, becoming the first for a British driver at the British Grand Prix. Sterling's place in F1 folklore was sealed, but for the man himself, it was just another day at the office. Prepared to race almost anything, in 1955 alone, Sterling competed in races from Buenos Aires to the Bahamas. In May, he drove to a stunning landmark victory on Italian roads at the daunting Mille Miglia, where the unknown waits around every bend. But Sterling's speed was unfettered as he pushed his Mercedes 300 SLR on, averaging nearly 100 miles an hour over close to eight hours of driving in what's been described as the most iconic single day's drive in motor racing history. In the Formula One World Championship, Sterling finished second to Fangio, the first of four consecutive runners-up finishes. He motored on with Maserati the following season, and then proudly with Van Wall and plucky privateers Rob Walker Racing. Sterling loved being the underdog, frustrating the more famous marks with his peerless speed and brilliant racecraft. He ushered in a new era at Argentina in 1958, with arguably his greatest ever win and the first rear-engine victory in Formula One. In his underpowered car, it was a race he had no business winning, but Moss would prove time and again that his guile behind the wheel could defeat far superior machinery. His glorious victories in an obsolete Lotus in Monaco in 1961 and that same year at the green hell of the Nürburgring illustrated again his fierce determination and outrageous speed. But there was renowned sportsmanship too, Moss losing out on the 1958 title as he refused to allow his great rival Mike Hawthorne's disqualification in Portugal, losing the title to him at the final race of this season in Morocco by just a single point. This was an era where success was tempered by tragedy, and Sterling described the fear of a serious accident as a constant shadow. And so it was that his career was ended in its prime by an accident at Goodwood in 1962. While Sterling Moss is famous for not winning a Formula One world title despite his brilliance, it was a distinction he came to embrace. But he was never the nearly man. When he was racing, Sterling Moss was the man. His rivals knew it then, and his legend lives on. <laughs>